Hello and welcome to the TI Precision Labs Switches and Multiplexer series. In this video, we will discuss SPI protocol and how to select the right signal switch for SPI applications. We will start with an overview of the SPI protocol, then we will discuss how MUXs can benefit your system in SPI applications, and highlight the important features to consider when choosing a MUX or switch for SPI. These key considerations are voltage, bandwidth, configuration, and protection features. SPI is a synchronous serial interface used by FPGAs and microcontrollers to communicate to a variety of peripherals, such as flash memories, sensors, ADCs, and SD cards over short distances. In SPI, typically one main controller is used to communicate with one or more secondary devices. This figure shows a four-lane, one-to-one, main-to-secondary configuration. Configurations with multiple main devices are also possible. SPI devices are push-pull drivers rather than open drain, so no external pull-up resistors are needed on I.O. lines. SPI is not defined by a formal standard, so protocol options may vary by application and devices used. Clock frequencies and data speeds may vary up to 75 to 100 MHz. Typically, the SPI bus contains four channels, two or more data lines. Please note the terminology used in this video. Main is used to replace the designator master, and secondary is used to replace the designator slave. The two data lines are typically called and abbreviated as main out and secondary in, or MOSI, and main in, secondary out, MISO. The other two data lines are clock frequency and one or more chip select bit. This figure shows how multiple secondary devices may be connected to one main controller. This configuration may also include multiple chip select lines for each secondary device from the main controller. As mentioned before, SPI protocol allows for direct connection from main controllers to multiple secondary devices. However, adding too many secondaries to this direct connection will increase bus capacitance and rise fall time of the signal. Adding a low on capacitance MUX, such as this four channel two to one MUX, to switch between one or more secondary devices will grant more flexibility in systems with only one chip select line while decreasing bus capacitance. Multiplexers can be used in many ways to benefit your SPI application. For example, MUXs may be used to select between multiple internal or external memory banks, as shown here. MUXs may also be used to expand chip select output if multiple secondary devices are connected to a main controller. In addition, TI has some multiplexers with signal path translation if main and secondary devices are not voltage compatible. Analog MUXs in signal switches are bidirectional, meaning that the system may drive the signal from either source or drain I.O. of the MUX, allowing for additional system design flexibility. Protection switches and multiplexers with the powered off protection feature may also be used to isolate your FPGA or microcontroller from non-volatile external memory, simplifying power sequencing, even in one-to-one -one SPI configurations. A switch with powered off protection ensures that the switch is high impedance when a voltage is applied to the signal pins while the device is powered off and protects the switch from damage. Because the SPI bus has no formal or standardized specification, it is important to align your switch parameters with those of the SPI devices in your system. Key parameters to align are voltage, bandwidth, taking into consideration additional factors such as on capacitance, channel count, and features such as powered off protection. The supply voltage, signal voltage, and continuous current through the switch must be in compliance with the absolute maximum ratings of the switch. Most switches and MUXs support input signals from rail to rail, and some switches even support input voltage beyond supply. Also, be sure that your control signal voltages align with the VIH and VIL of the switch for proper operation. SPI does not have one specific data rate so the switch bandwidth required is determined by your system components. The recommended MUX bandwidth is three times the clock frequency. Lower C on and higher bandwidth switches are critical in systems where board layout or connectors add extra capacitance. The number of channels is another consideration for SPI multiplexing. For example, a four channel two to one switch shown here may be used to switch between two secondary devices in a typical four channel SPI bus. 
A six-channel device may be used if more data lines are required or in QSPY applications. Finally, additional protection may be required in high-performance systems with external non-volatile memory. To simplify power sequencing and protect your system in such use cases, look for a switch with Powered Off Protection. You can learn more about Powered Off Protection in the TIPL training video, Simplify Power Sequencing with Powered Off Protection. To select a switch for your SPY application, you can search our catalog of analog switches and muxes on ti.com under the Analog Switches and Multiplexers category tab. Our quick search engine helps to find the right switch for you. You may choose to filter by configuration, number of channels, or supply voltage. You can even use the drop-down arrow on the Features tab to see a list of recommended switches and muxes for SPY applications. Once you've run the quick search, you can select the On Capacitance filter on the list of filters on the left sidebar. The results can now be filtered and sorted by bandwidth or on capacitance. Now you're ready to narrow down your choices and compare switches that are best for your SPI application. In this video, you learned about key considerations for selecting a switch for your SPI application. To learn more, check out this application note, enabling SPI-based flash memory expansion by using multiplexers. Thank you for watching this TI Precision Labs video. To find more switches and multiplexers technical resources and search products, please visit ti.com switches.